Hello Glamour Ghouls and welcome back. If you are new here, my name is Midge Munster and on this channel we do all things campy, kooky, glamorous, and spooky. Today is the first day of spring and back in, was it January when I did my tutorial on how to do my roller curls and how I do my makeup, I had a lot of you ask if I could show how to do some simple vintage style updos. I get a lot of requests about how to do my beehive that I wear frequently. And with the weather warming up, this is my favorite time of year to go to quick and easy vintage style updos to keep my hair up off my neck. So today I'm going to show you how to do two very simple vintage style updos. We're going to start with a very easy one. You can do this even if you have zero hair styling experience at all. It's very, very simple. And in fact, we're not even going to be using my hair. This style is called the poodle. So first you're just going to take your hair and brush it all back. And you're going to want to get this into a high ponytail. Now, of course, you can do any of these styles with bangs as well. If you have bangs or if you wanted to like section off an area and create a faux bumper bang of some kind, you could do that as well. But I tend to like to get all my hair just up and off my face and neck. So once you have all your hair up here, you're going to start twisting it. And just twist it and twist it around until it's in a nice little ball on top of your head. And then you can either bobby pin this or I'm just going to take a little hair elastic and tie this down so that we have this little nub on the top of our head. <laughs> now, as I mentioned, we are not going to be using my hair for this style. I have this little faux ponytail. I got this on Amazon. I think it was $10. It was extremely inexpensive. This is one of the only ones I've ever found in this copper color. So I will link it in the description below for those of you who have similar hair tones to me, but you can get this in almost any natural color, blonde, brunette. They have it in like bright, more fiery reds, but it's just this flat woven netted piece. And it has this little comb up here and then a drawstring down here. And to wear this normally, you would put the comb at the front and the drawstring at the back and put it like this. And it would look like a ponytail in your hair. This is also great. You could absolutely, you know, put a little headscarf on or a bow and have this be a very cute little kind of flouncy 50s, 60s ponytail. But what I like to do with this is turn it around backwards. So the comb part is going to go in the back of our little bun here, and then the drawstring will be up front. And we're going to pull that as tight as we can so that it tightens around the bun first. So the hair is gonna fall in front of our face. Let's start by doing that. Let's see, here's our drawstring. We're just gonna pull that really tight around that bun, and then we're gonna wrap it around the ponytail and pin it underneath with a bobby pin. If it's a little visible, it's okay, because honestly, what we're about to do with the hair, you won't see it anyway. So now we've got all this hair in front of our face here, and as you can see, that little bun has created quite a bit of height up top, which is what you want. So now you're just gonna gather up all this hair and stack it on top of our head so it's not hanging in our face. This already, just by setting it up on my head like that, already looks pretty cute. Like you could pin this down like this and walk out the door pretty much, but we're gonna go a little bit further than that. So what we're gonna do is take little sections and isolate the curls in this ponytail. And then you can pin into those loops as you get them and get them to kind of stick forward like that. And you're just gonna kind of play with the different hair and the different loops until you get a shape that you're happy with. You can be as tidy or as messy with this as you want. It doesn't have to look perfect. That's kind of the point. It's supposed to be a, a stack of curls on top of your head. And you can just keep messing with this until you get the shape you want. I'll sometimes spend quite a bit of time messing and kind of just zhuzhing until it looks 
perfect, but you will end up with something that looks like this. And as you can see, this is very cute, very chic looking. It looks like you put a lot of effort into it, but really it will probably only take you about 10 to 15 minutes to get this perfected. I have been looking for a way to achieve this hairstyle for years with like the amount of volume I wanted. I wanted that look of Shirley MacLaine in What A Way To Go, just like big, beautiful, stack of curls on top of your head. And this is such an easy and affordable way to achieve that. The second style I'm going to show you is a little more complex. It is the beehive. But before we get into that, let's get a quick word from today's sponsor. Pear Eyewear presents Bemidged. Starring Midge Munster. <laughs> Leave it storming on the day I planned Darren and I's anniversary picnic. Surely he would understand if I just cleared it up a little bit. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Beautiful. Now I better hurry and put the finishing details on my outfit before Darren gets home. Honey, I'm home. <laughs> oh no, I'm out of time. What am I going to do? Hmm. I know. I'll just use my pair. Pair provides low-cost prescription eyewear with a twist. Their unique top frame technology allows you to switch your style just like magic. And with over 650 unique magnetic top frames starting at $25, it's super affordable to change up your look. Virtual Try-On lets you find your perfect pair right from your home, so just select your base frame and you're good to go. If you'd like to try pair for yourself, check out the link in my description box and use code MidgeMonster15 at checkout for 15% off. Perfect. I'm all ready to go. Silly me, I almost forgot. There, now I'm ready. <laughs> Thank you so much to Pear Eyewear for sponsoring today's video. So now we're going to do the beehive. And like I said, this one is a little bit more involved. Um, we are gonna use our own hair, which obviously, um, that will present its own challenges depending on what your hair type is. I have very coarse, very thick hair. Um, if you have really fine hair or really thin hair, you may have to adjust some things just to account for your own hair type. However, I will try my best to kind of mention things as we go through here that will help with hair types that are not like mine. The first thing I will tell you is that regardless of your hair type, this hairstyle works best on dirty hair. You can do it on freshly showered hair, but it's just never quite as well structured. It doesn't hold quite as well. This is definitely a style for kind of that last day you can get away with not washing your hair <laughs> when you're kind of at the, the end of your wash cycle. Uh, this is the style for that for sure. My hair is pretty coarse so it doesn't get super oily but I don't know if you might be able to see like today it is definitely kind of my, my last day before I need to wash my hair. It's a little oilier. It's a little shinier. It's the perfect texture right now for this style. That being said, especially if you have fine hair, a great way to bulk up your hair for this style and for teasing is to add a little bit of dry shampoo into the mix here. We don't want a ton, we don't want it whiting out any areas of our hair, but I'll just take a little bit to my roots right before I start. And then you want to brush that in so that it's not obvious that you have dry shampoo on your hair. So now you can do one of two things depending on if you have a, a particular item in your hair styling arsenal. So something that's very helpful when doing a beehive is having a rat. And what a rat is is basically a clump of your own hair. I have a few that I have made out of just the hair that gets caught in your brush. Basically you clean out your hairbrush and kind of roll that hair until it all knots together and you get something that looks like this. You can also buy similar things like a hair donut or things like that through a store. I like this for me specifically because it matches my hair perfectly. Most hair pieces or things you can get at a store are brown or blonde. And so if they're showing at all through my hair, you're going to be able to tell that 
it's not my hair. So if you have a unique hair color or a fantasy color, try to create your own rat. It's very simple. Most of us have hair in our brushes all the time. I know for some people that might be kind of gross, but it's a tried and true vintage styling technique. A lot of people have used these through the ages to create volume in their hair. And because they're real hair, you can stick bobby pins through them really easily. I couldn't do half the styles I do without them. I, I love having rats for my hair. So if you have a wrap for your hair, you're going to only need to create two sections here. If you don't, you're gonna to need to create three. And we're going to be sectioning our hair this way. So we're gonna do a section in the front, a section in the middle, and a section in the back. Or if we're doing two, just kind of splitting our head this way. I'm going to do the two section method since I do have rats, but I'll explain the three section method as we go. We can sort of label these sections as the top or front of the hair, which is gonna be what we actually see of the beehive. The nest, which is going to be kind of what we build our beehive on top of and then the base, which is gonna be kind of where everything is anchored more or less. So for this front section, which is going to be, like I said, what you're actually seeing of the beehive, you're going to wanna to take the point of your comb and put it kind of at the top of your ear, where the top of your ear meets your head and kind of draw up and pull this little triangular section of your hair forward. So it's gonna kind of look like that. And then you're gonna to wanna to do that on the other side as well so that you have this whole front section. So you should have a chunk of hair that kind of looks like this coming from the center of your head. You can see the line here is about halfway back for me. Um, again, I'm not creating a third section right here, but if you need a third section, you could probably cut this section in half. And then what you would do is create a little bun right here with your hair, kind of like what we did for the first style where we created that bun to create volume. You would wrap and create a bun uh, with half of this section here, right in the middle in that nest so that you have something to build your beehive on. So for the moment, I'm just going to wrap this piece up. It's gonna look really, really ridiculous for a second. I'm just gonna kind of pin that aside to the front of my head so that it's out of the way. And we're going to work with all this back section for the moment. Now, if you wanted to, you could leave this section down and just do kind of a half beehive with this part. That's really cute as well. And I've done that several times, but to do a true updo for this video, we're going to put this section up. So we're just gonna start by combing it into a low ponytail. And you really want this very low at the base of the neck. I call this a, a founding father's ponytail. <laughs> One right, right down here, right at the nape. Then what we're going to do is much like we did with the hair on top before, we're going to twist it really tightly into a kind of French twist so that it is laying flat against the back of our head. It's kind of hard to explain, so I'm gonna turn and show you how I do this. So you've got your low pony here. You're going to kind of flip it up and start twisting from the base so that that hair gets twisted really tightly together and starts creating this kind of almost like a conch shell, <laughs> this like flip over. Once you've got it tight, you're going to stick your hand in this little slit here and tuck the ponytail into itself, tuck it under, and then you're just gonna take a bobby pin or two and stick it into this side area to hold it. I usually end up sticking one through the side and then one kind of through the top here and it should look something like this. And obviously if you're not filming yourself and doing this for a camera like I am, now would be a really good time to take a hand mirror to a large mirror and do the, the double mirror technique to check the back of that and tuck in any loose ends, make sure it looks how you want it. Now we're gonna get into creating the actual hive of the beehive. So we're going to unclip this section. brush it out and you're done. No. <laughs> so for this part, you're really going to want a good teasing comb. I've got this rat's tail comb and it, as you can see, has 
two layers of bristles in it. It has some really fine ones and some thicker ones. This is the best type of comb to really get volume in your hair, especially if you have hair that tends not to rat well or not to stay. This is gonna be your best friend along with the dry shampoo. And of course, we're gonna need some aerosol hairspray. So you're gonna go section by section and I'm gonna start over here. So this is what's going to create the side of the beehive. So I'm gonna start by spraying a little bit of hairspray in there just to get some texture going. Comb that in. And then we're just gonna back comb at the root of the hair. And you probably go about halfway up doing this because we're not just teasing the root, we're building that nest. So we want to have lots of volume on the inside of the hair. And spray it some more once you get that in. And if you've done a good job ratting, you'll know because the hair will stand up like this when it's, uh, when it's finished. <laughs> now for my personal beehive at this point, I do like to take a little bit of this section at the bang and kind of bring it out. Because I personally like to create a little bit of a flat front section for my beehive. So I just leave a flat line of that hair not teased and I'll show you how to deal with that in a minute. But then we're just gonna get into back combing here again. But now this is the really important part. So we don't have any weird breaks or gaps in our beehive. Once you've back combed this section a little bit, you want to bring it together with the section before it, kind of smooth it into each other, and then give it a couple really good back combs together so that these two pieces of hair, or two sections of hair, lock into one big section. And then you're just gonna keep doing that all the way across your head. Now, at this point, you should be looking a little something like Heat Miser from Year Without Santa Claus or uh, what's his name? Kronos from The Incredibles. <laughs> now, I'm going to flip all this hair back over and this is where our rats are going to come into play. So I have two of these. I'm just going to take them at the line where that hair stops and I'm going to pin them to the base of the hair here to hold them kind of right in that section where the middle of our hive is going to be. This is just going to create a nice base for where the, all this hair is going to end up. Or if you're doing the three section method, that's where your, your little bun nest is going to be. So now I wish I could find my smoothing brush. I've misplaced it somewhere. So we're going to have to use my normal brush, which is not what I would recommend but you're gonna kind of smooth all these pieces together and you should have kind of this little bundle, this little ponytail. I'm going to kind of wrap that under and tuck it. And you should have a little kind of knot of hair back there. And you're gonna pin that right into the top of your French twist. Or if you have that little bun in your head, you can anchor it to that as well. But as you can see, the hair is now freestanding in this shape. And now we just have to sculpt it. So I'm going to take my comb and very gently, you don't want to brush out the back combing, but just on the top layer, you're going to smooth the hive. This is also a great time to introduce some hairspray to the top layer. As you can see, I've got this kind of area out here where that hair is going a little crazy. So you just want to kind of push it and gather it and you can push from up here too to thicken it since it seems like it's a little thin over there. Push some of that hair down there and then I'm just going to tuck it into that crevice in the French tuck back there and pin it. And if any one section gets a little too weird or flat for your liking, you're just going to take the tail of your rat's tail comb 
and pull it out. I also sometimes will take my comb and stick it up here just to pull the top of the beehive up a little bit if I want more volume. This is looking pretty good to me. This is looking how I want it. So we're gonna take this little strand we left out here of bang hair. I'm gonna spray it at the root just a little bit with some of this. So she's looking a little shiny. <laughs> I'm gonna put just the tiniest bit of tease in it and then flatten it and tuck it behind my ear. So we have this tiny little bang going across the beehive in the front. Then once you're happy with the shape, you just want to spray the crud out of it. <laughs> and as you spray, you can kind of smooth the hair back just to catch any little flyaways or anything. Now you could absolutely leave it just like this if you wanted to, but I like to add one more element, which is a nylon scarf. I have a bunch of these nylon scarves in different colors from the 50s and 60s, and I'll fold it into a triangle like this and then tuck the bottom triangle corner like that so that it's flat. Then we just put the flat part at the base of our neck and wrap up around the beehive and tie it right here just above that bang so it's peeking out. And I like to tie mine in a little bow and fluff it out. So that it looks like this. The other really nice part about the nylon scarf when you're learning to do this is that it hides any imperfections and holds the back of the beehive really stable so that it's not going to come loose or blow away. Eventually when you get good at this it will be very sturdy on its own but this is a great thing when you're a beginner just to hide any imperfections you don't want seen or to make sure your hair stays put. And that is all for today. I really hope you all enjoyed this video and that you hopefully learned something, that you took away a new style that you're excited to try. If you end up trying one of these hairstyles, be sure to tag me over on Instagram. I would love to see what you do and how you put your take on it. Thank you again to Pear Eyewear for sponsoring this video. Remember, you can check them out at the link in my description box and use the code MidgeMonster15 for 15% off your order. And as always, if you're not already, be sure to subscribe to the channel before you leave today. We would love to have you as a part of our Glamour Ghoul gang. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. And until next time, keep it campy, kooky, glamorous, and spooky. Bye!